I'm sure I'm losing a couple of viewers with that ugly seven day forecast, but maybe this, this little segment here, my favorite segment, Weather Wiz Wednesday, maybe I can win a few of them back. I still need some more questions. You guys have been great. They've been excellent. Anything from climatology, convection, anything. I'm opening it up. I would love to answer them on our Wednesday segment. And of course, you will get to win some tickets to the Elks Theater too. So send your weather questions to weather at newcenter1.com and send a video of your kids because we got a great one today. Here's our Weather Wiz, James. Hold on. All right. Um, hey, Eric. This is James. What? Why does it hail during a thunderstorm? Well, thank you so much, James. So polite, too. I like that. But as I told you, it just adds to the adorable factor. Why does it hail during thunderstorms? That's an excellent question. And, well, no surprise to anyone looking at the hoods of cars here in western South Dakota. We get a lot of hail. We get some very big hail. So hail, essentially, is a hydrometeor. Rain is a hydrometeor. It shows up on our TrueView Titan radar. It's a little different than sleet and ice pellets because it's a little bit bigger. It has that round shape, and that's why we use round objects to categorize the size based on the diameter. But here in the Northern Plains and the High Plains and in the higher elevations, we see the most hail events a year and some of the biggest hail because elevation is huge and that's because you have to think it has to be a freezing layer in the huge cumulonimbus thunderstorm clouds. We're actually closer to that because we actually live higher up closer to the base of the clouds where it is freezing and we have low freezing levels. That's where we get the best hail development. Just think of it just spinning around up there and it's very dry here. We have low relative humidities during the summer. If the mid-level is dry, there's less melting going on as that hailstone falls to the earth and it actually lowers the freezing level even more. If you have a dry mid-level below the thunderstorm and the surface, updrafts are huge. We get some very impressive updrafts here in the strongest thunderstorms we see and wind shear is also a huge factor in hail development. Just think of it, that cloud rocking and rolling up there, pushing the hail up and down and it just continues to grow. Now think of a warmer climate. It has a bigger layer of warm air to go through. That's why you tend to see more melting. They have smaller hail, and a lot of it just melts completely and falls in the form of raindrop. But of course, we have cumulonimbus clouds. Here you go. And that, they're so big, up to 30,000, 40,000 feet, because they have strong updrafts, and that's what causes the big upward development of the cloud. Way up there. Very cold up there. It's a mix of water and ice, super cooled water, which will stick to anything. So the hailstone starts developing. It's kind of bouncing around. I talked about the shear, the rocking and rolling up there. That just keeps spitting it up. And it's going to make a couple of trips, depending on how strong that updraft is. So you have the hailstone. It grows either sticking to the super cool water. That's why you can see rings on it, like a tree, if you cut a hailstone in half. Or it sticks, smaller hail sticks together, and it tends to grow that way. Eventually, it gets so heavy that it starts weighing more than the updraft and it starts coming down and this is when you hear it coming and it finally hits the surface and not a lot of melting with the dry air and it's falling a lot closer to the surface. Anyways, James, congratulations. Thank you for your excellent question. Family four pack of tickets to the Elks Theater, four tickets, two drinks, and two popcorns. Once again, a New Center One representative will contact you, James. Congratulations. Keep the weather questions coming. Weather at newcenter1.com.